the calm before the storm, love triangles galore, and someone finally called them vampires. The Passage, Season 1, Episode 5, Review and Breakdown. Hey y'all, it's your Twisted Girl Next Door here, and today I am reviewing Season 1, Episode 5 of The Passage. Okay, so if you're new here, the way I do it is I do the happenings, as in what happened in the episode, ship talk, because I love talking about my relationships, oh yeah. My favorite line when it came to the episode, predictions, because even if I'm wrong, I want to be able to put it on record that I tried to guess. And then finally, book talk, because The Passage is based off of the best-selling trilogy novel series, The Passage. Overall, I really liked this episode. It wasn't as action-packed as the previous episode, but it definitely felt like what I said before, which was it's the calm before the storm. Things were being laid. The groundwork was being laid. A lot of the characters that we've gotten to know so far kind of drew their line in the sand in terms of where they stood, which I really appreciated. Also, we got to see a little bit of what were some of these characters that we've been seeing for a bit, their motivations behind things a bit more. And we saw a little bit more of developments between certain relationships. So overall, this was a solid episode. Amy has powers. Oh my God. Okay, so we found out that Amy is getting powers, and two of those powers that we saw was that she has the ability to read minds around her, both of the virals and of the regular humans, and we also got to see in the last few minutes of the episode that she's able to basically scream or whatever and push off virals from attacking, basically sub subdue them in some kind of way, which was really cool. And I think we all saw this sort of coming, that Amy was going to develop powers when it came to the serum, because we knew it was going to affect her differently, because, you know, she's special in some kind of way, although they have not gone any deeper as to why out of everyone she was the little girl that was picked, and this is happening to her because it kind of makes you wonder, could this have been any little person uh, that was affected? But I still hold on to what I've been saying so far of this season that I think Amy is special for some other particular reason that hasn't been revealed yet. And so what we saw when it came to this episode is that she's definitely getting powers and that she's trying to figure out what those powers mean. And it was a really bit of a heartfelt moment between her and Brad where she was afraid that he was going to reject her because now she's different and we also see that she's somewhat afraid of becoming what Shauna and Fanning and all of them are although I think we can keep our fingers crossed to be pretty sure that that's not going to be the case but it's definitely a real fear of hers which I appreciated that they have this sort of thing where she wasn't just like oh I can read minds now and suddenly I'm so cool and such a superhero but more so what does this mean? In connection with Amy, we saw that Brad got to kind of go inside the mind or maybe Anthony went inside his mind of them two meeting in the, you know, cerebral plane of the mind that all the virals have been doing to people. And that was really interesting, I thought, because, you know, one, we got to see that Carter is still somewhat cognizant. Uh, he went viral. I guess it makes sense now, that word. He went viral. Um, last episode, and we didn't know what happened to him. It was just kind of like he was subdued, but what happened to him? But now we see that he is somewhat living in his mind, and I think that was his mother who died like three years ago, that he kind of either brought her back or was able to kind of manifest her in his mind in this sanctuary that he's created for himself. And that was a very interesting conversation that he and Brad had, where he was like, now your job, Brad, is to basically prepare Amy for what is coming. And I thought that was really cool because they laid the groundwork in episodes before this that Carter really took a liking to Amy in a very friendship kind of way, a, 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 almost kind of like family. And that was his motivation for telling Brad, I'm warning you, not because of you, not because of Fanny, not because of anyone else, but because I care for Amy, which I thought was a really nice thing to reinforce when it comes to that relationship that Amy's a very special little girl and that there are people who care for her and want her to survive. Dr. Lear and Fanning. Okay, so we found out that Dr. Lear isn't infected with uh anybody's blood or at least that's what Fanning told him that he wasn't infected. And we also found out that Fanning was in love with or is still in love with Dr. Lear's wife. 
I thought this was an interesting angle that they went with it. Once again, like I, I had said before, Fanny seemed to have kind of forgotten about Amy this episode and was very preoccupied with Elizabeth, Dr. Lear's wife. And we saw through the flashbacks that he's been in love with her for some time, maybe more in love with her, like he said, than anybody else he's ever you know, had romantic feelings for, and that they had something of an affair of some sort. And Elizabeth basically made her choice to stay with her husband, Dr. Lear. And Fanning was somewhat taunting Dr. Lear during the episode of saying that he could still win Elizabeth. And we saw in a way that, as Dr. Lear noted to him, was that what this is about is that you lost and you can't get over it, which kind of goes into what we've seen of Fanning's personality, both pre-viral and after viral, in the way that he functions, right? He's kind of a superstar, he's a genius, and he's cocky. And so I thought that was interesting. Unlike with Carter and Shauna, we didn't necessarily get to sympathize with Fanning. It wasn't so much that you sympathized with him with this backstory. I think more so you kind of got a little bit more into his psyche beyond being this kind of big, bad, uh, viral character in the story so far, which it humanized him in a way. So you saw a little bit of that and you saw a little bit of his heart because, you know, every character has to have that sort of soft spot when it comes to their situation, right? That's kind of storytelling. And we see that with Fanning, his soft spot is Elizabeth. And whether or not that, that is going to come into play later on, I guess we'll have to see. Dr. Nicole Sykes. Finally, she did some stuff. Oh my gosh, this is what I've been waiting for for the past five episodes. It feels like a whole season. Like I said, it feels like every episode is like a mini movie. So it feels like we've been going through like months of this story when in reality it's only episode five. But I really was waiting for Nicole to do something more than simply kind of yes and no and give the needles and, and things of that nature. So this episode really drove home that she is a leader in some way and something of a hero. She drew her line in the sand when it came to Amy. She picked her side of Amy and Brad's side, which is the side to be on. Oh yeah. And she basically told Clark, no, I'm not on your side at this point or whatever side you happen to be on. And I really like that she stood up to that guy, Gilder, who I did not like, just like the rest of them, which he, the actor did a really good job because I guess you're not supposed to like him. And I definitely got the vibe that, yeah, I don't like this guy either. And they want to turn, we we realized and we found out in this episode that they want to turn Amy into a weapon. That this whole situation, when it came to, there is a bird flu plague happening in the world. And for whatever reason, the government has decided that's not our priority at the moment. But nonetheless, we saw that Dr. Nicole basically made a choice and it was really nice to see her connection with Amy which we kind of saw early on and I'm hoping this continues I'm hoping she continues to play a pivotal role in leadership in being a character that actually has a say so and does a lot more than what she had been given up to this episode so I'm glad that finally took a turn we saw a little bit of Lila and Lacey this episode so basically what we got with them was that Lacey decided that her calling was for protecting Amy, which I think, and I'll get into this a little bit later when it comes to book comparison, goes along with the narrative. And I think it makes sense because Lacey is such a great character. And I think it was kind of foreshadowed that she'd play a large part. So we saw that happen. And it seems like Lila got kidnapped. I don't know. I, she was praying and then someone came and grabbed her. I don't. I think it's probably going to be a fake out, but I think that'll be interesting because who's still after them is the question. The tragic Dr. Daniel. The cocky Dr. Daniels, who basically got played by the viral Winston. We kind of saw this coming. He was something of a social climber. He was trying to undermine Nicole when it came to meeting with Gilder, and it cost him. I mean, while I was watching that scene where he thought he was controlling Winston, I'm like, Winston is choosing to follow what you're saying. He is literally choosing to follow. When, when Winston was, like, raising his hand and stuff, and Dr. Daniels really thought that he was the one controlling him, I'm like... How do you not sense that this guy is choosing to act like he's under your control right now? So that was kind of predictable, but it also, in a way, was somewhat satisfying because Dr. Daniels, big ups to the actor because he played it so well, this idea of this cocky character who kind of wants to be the leader and he's too smart for his own good and also too manipulative. And so 
he finally kind of got what was coming to him. He had been undermining this whole situation with Project Noah and how dangerous things had got, and he just basically underestimated it, and it cost him his life so far. I mean, he was bitten. He looked like he was dead. I don't know if they bite characters, if they bite humans and they come back to life. I don't know if that's it's that sort of thing, or he's just straight up dead. I guess we'll see. But Dr. Daniels is definitely affected. What we also got from that is the fact that the virals can't control the humans. Like, it's more than just basically getting into their minds. It seems that he can make it so, or at least Winston was able to make it so Dr. Daniels did what he told him to do. Shauna and Clark. I'm, I'm over them at this point. I mean, last episode I said I didn't think it was romantic. And even with this sexual thing Shauna was sort of doing to him, I still don't think it's romantic. I don't think it's romantic at all. I think Clark is doomed. And even though Shauna made it seem like I'm taking you with me as though it's like you're mine, like, you know, like kind of taking him on as a pet, I kind of hope that he redeems himself by somehow sacrificing his life somewhere in this season, perhaps to save Nicole, because he has just been messing up. And obviously, Shauna has some type of hold over him at this point. And I, I don't think it's something to ship. I don't ship that at all. I think it's very toxic. And honestly, I don't really see I see they have chemistry in terms of like scene partners. I don't see chemistry like this could be some type of epic weird morbid love story clark and nicole i was rooting for them a little bit i kind of hope that clark kind of came to his senses somewhere in the midst of this season and decided that he was really going to fight for making it so that nicole was safe first and foremost because he's leaving her vulnerable by not telling her what's going on right he's leaving her vulnerable to whatever's happening with these people and their virals and the mind and things and so he lied to her again she went to him she said i checked up on you and instead of saying my bad for lying to you it's like oh you checking up on me now i'm like wow talk about a guy caught in a lie here and so he still didn't take the chance to really you know confide in her although when it came to Sean it was still like get away from me don't say Nicole's name so it's clear he still cares for Nicole but for whatever reason I don't think they're being very clear as to why he's so resistant to at least confide in Nicole they it doesn't really seem like he has a soft spot for Shauna and I don't think he's completely under her mind control so I'm a little confused as the motivation for his character to be so resistant to confiding in Nicole so far. But I was rooting for them, but at this point, I totally think Nicole can do better. Lear, Elizabeth, and Fanning. Well, I mean, clearly Elizabeth had some sort of feelings for Fanning to some degree, and I think, but I think she did get to the point where she was not for being for him and maybe have felt manipulated by him to some degree to cheat on Lear with him but I think I think Lear and Elizabeth are the solid couple I think Fanning just can't get over it like Lear has said but I am questioning how Elizabeth made her way out and if Fanning has some type of control over her because that may cause some problems when it comes to Lear because he's trusting his wife and she's fine now but maybe it's Fanning in control so that's going to be a problem but um I you know I hope they do well but I I kind of think all the humans are doomed when it comes to this show so um yeah we'll see how that goes how you gonna outrun the end of the world thanks Carter I still predict that Clark's gonna die. I just hope that it's kind of heroic because he's been so annoying thus far. Not annoying like I can't stand this character on screen, but like you are just making really bad decisions. And I think the only way to semi-redeem his character is if he dies somehow trying to protect Nicole. <laughs> Okay, so in terms of book talk, not too much to get into in this particular one. Um, I think what we're seeing, I wanted to kind of focus a little bit on Lacey since she is so cool, but also that we knew in the books that Lacey plays a very big part in terms of protecting Amy. She ends up living for like hundreds of years and whatnot, and she's more so a nun in the books. And I think what we saw in this episode, that they're going to play into that. I think we, we saw kind of foreshadowing that a lot of characters may end up staying around for a while, even though 
everyone's kind of human and things are going a little weird right now. But I think the book has it so Lacey plays a pivotal role. And with this episode, they definitely made it so she spoke it out loud that her purpose now was to protect Amy. And so that was, I think, the meshing of the two worlds in that sense, which is very cool because I want Lacey to stay around for a very long time. Okay, so what did you think of episode five, season one of The Passage? Did you like it so far? Are you with me in thinking that Clark is doomed completely? I know I keep saying that, but I know it's going to happen. I feel like it's going to happen. Let me know. Comment down below. And also, be sure to subscribe so that you are the first to know when I post my videos of all things horror and dark fantasy. Thanks for watching. Let's get creepy together. Uh